Hello crafty friends, in today's video I'm going to make a cover for this journal. It's just a plain journal that I've made where I'm going to be adding elements to it throughout a video series and to show you how to add and embellish your junk journal. I originally covered this journal in a vintage cardstock, but that's a little too plain. I want to jazz it up quite a bit. I'm going to be using one of these oversized index cards with a spiral edge where I'm going to be creating an element and that will be then attached to the front of the journal. My theme is going to be autumn, so there will be autumn colours and autumn elements. And I've gone through all my things. These items are from Topology. I've collected all the bits and pieces that feel autumn-ish. I'm obviously not going to use every single element you see. I just sort of tend to pull out things that I like and then I have them ready. For when I'm creating my item, then they're all in arm's reach. So just go through your things and find colors and textures and elements that you think suit the theme you're going to use. I'll put a link to the topology website in the description box below. If you use my link, there is also a lovely discount for you if you make a purchase. So a lot of different things collected. More on the vintage side, I'm looking for a vintage autumn theme. These beautiful papers, they are like a handmade type paper, but like a doily. This beautiful textured homemade paper that has got big like holes in it and fibers. It's really, really beautiful. Some more homemade paper. Some really lovely papers of topology. And this is like a hessian fabric. And then I've also done some printables. I have these printables from Digital Collage Club. I've gone and found all the autumn themed ones and I've printed those out. Again, not sure yet what I'm going to use, but I've printed it all out so I have them ready if I'm going to use something. The link to Digital Collage Club with a discount code will be in the description box below. This video is part of a collaboration with some other lovely channels. I'll put a link to those channels in the description box below. Please do visit them and have a look at their beautiful creations. And why don't you hit subscribe while you're there too. The collaboration is for something called free flow stitching. That is when you're stitching elements of your artwork or your junk journal under a sewing machine, but in a free way. You just let the artwork move underneath the foot of the sewing machine and do its own thing. You don't control it very much, you just steer it in different directions so it free flows. There's no straight edges, it's not always just on the edge, it's just all over the place and it creates beautiful texture and a really interesting element to add to your artwork. I will be doing free flow stitching on the cover of this journal. Before I start, I want to change the front cover and the spine to be something a little bit more suited to my theme. This is going to be just the background part of the element I'm going to create, but I do want to change it a bit. So I'm going to use this autumn themed printable from Digital Collage Club, and I'm just going to tear it down to size. I'm not going to cut anything with a scissors or a cutter. I'm happy just to use a ruler, and I'm just going to cut it down to the correct size that I want and leaving the edges quite rough. Now I've cut it slightly smaller, about a centimeter shorter than the actual size of the front cover. And that's because I don't want it to go from edge to edge. What I'm going to do though is just go with some gesso on the very edge just to lighten the already placed background cardstock that I've used. And then I'm going to place the autumn themed one on top. This will just allow it to blend a bit more and to fade this vintage cardstock sort of more into the background. I also want to change the spine of the book and I found this beautiful pale sage green with white spots that I'm going to use. I'm just going to cut this down to size. I don't measure very accurately. I sort of eyeball it most of the time and again I'm just going to use my ruler so I'm just measuring from edge to edge and then just wrapping it around and just going to cut that down to size. I'm going to attach the spine cardstock first and I'm going to use some Mod Podge for this only because it's handy on my desk. You could also use craft glue, double sided tape or gel medium or even a glue stick, although I'm not sure the glue stick would hold very well if you're using a thicker cardstock.
Before I add the background paper, I'm just going to distress the edge. I'm using the Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color Vintage Photo with my ink applicator. I don't want this to lay flat, so I'm sort of curling the edges a bit. I'm just using a skewer to roll the edges up, and then I'm also tearing it and roughing up some of the edges. I want it to look worn and used. I'm then going to attach this using double-sided tape. The reason I'm using double-sided tape for this is because the paper is just regular ATGSM copy paper and any other kind of glue I think would make it maybe buckle too much and if I used a hot glue gun there'd be like bubbles underneath. So I think the double-sided tape is the easiest and most effective option. At this point, I'm also going to attach the closure. I'm just using a piece of calico fabric that I have ripped and I'm leaving the frayed edges. I'm going to adhere the top part of the fabric, the one that's on the top part of the cover, with a piece of double-sided tape. This will then go underneath the element I'm about to create. Put that to the side and let's continue with the actual element or focal point of the front cover. I'm just going to start by adding some collage elements in the background. I'm using some different washi tapes that are vintage with text or print on. I'm just sticking them randomly as part of the background. I'm also adding some vintage music paper. I'm adding this with Mod Podge. I'm also adding a layer of Mod Podge over the music paper because I'm going to add some wet medium later and I don't want it to become all soggy. At this point, just add any kind of collage or background papers you like, as much or as little as you want, and anything to suit your theme. I'm now going to add some white gesso with a paintbrush over most of the collage elements that I've placed down earlier. This is to soften the whole look and to make it look cohesive and to blend so you don't have just bits of stuck down papers. It sort of all becomes one and gives it a more soft look. I'm also going to do some stenciling with texture paste to add some additional texture to the overall look. This stencil is from PM Artist Studio. I'm going to put a link in the description box below. So using my palette knife and the texture paste, I'm just going to apply in just three or four areas, just randomly to create a design that's going to hold some nice color elements shortly. When it's nice and dry, I'm going to add some inks. These inks are the Tim Holtz Distress Sprays. I'm just using them not as a spray, I'm just opening the bottle and just splashing some color down. This one is called Fossilized Amber. And I'm just going to sprinkle some down, spray some water, and just let the colors run over the texture paste. And you'll see it goes into the grooves and creates lighter and darker areas and beautiful contrasts. The second color I've used is Vintage Photo. This one is Matte Mist Watercolor in the color Army Green. I also want to add some orange to give it more of that autumn feel. This is a color burst powder in the color tangerine. It is super concentrated. So you just need a few little specks of the powder and then you spray some water and use a wet paintbrush and it creates beautiful bold colors. I 
I'm going to add a few more layers of color until I get the right balance. I would really love if you subscribed to my channel. It is also home of the Full Deck Challenge and I have lots of mixed media, art journaling and junk journal tutorials. When you subscribe, also don't forget to hit the little bell so you're notified every time I upload new content. I'm just going to go through the principles and just see which pieces I think I'm going to use. I like this little clock face with the autumn leaf, so I'm just going to cut that out and perhaps use that as part of the focal point. I'm still not quite sure what I'm doing, so I'm just gathering ideas at this point. There is a fall poem that I really wanted to use as part of this spread, so I'm going to just tear that out and see how I can Im implement that into the project. I've also used these leaf dies from Coco Rosa Studio to create some fall colored die cuts. Now I'm going to do some tearing and ripping again in this project. The project though is not quite dry, so I'm just going to dry it again really, really well so it can tear properly and create great rough edges. So I've torn my project up, I've torn all four edges, and then I'm going to place the edge again but on an opposite side so that the colors are not matching. That's what we're actually looking for. We're looking for contrast and that rough overlapping and rustic look. I'm going to place some of the leaf die cuts in between where I'm going to rejoin the papers. This will create beautiful texture and bring that element of autumn through. I'm going to use a glue stick to reattach the edges and to also place the die cuts. We're not going to use a lot of glue, we just need a little bit just to hold these in place while we run it under the sewing machine. Once all the glue is dry, we're going to move over to the sewing machine so I can show you this free flow stitching I've been talking about. But first, let me show you a quick close up of what the card looks like so far so you can see the beautiful textures and colors and contrast that it's created. Time to start that free flow stitching. Just quickly, I'm using a dark brown thread at the top and I have a beige in my bobbin. I haven't changed the bobbin color. I do like the two contrasting colors, but you can do it the way you like. So we're just going to start stitching and we're really not going to do anything straight or planned. We're just going to let the machine go and just gently move the paperwork underneath the foot so it can create curves and curls and twists and turns just free flowing and have lots of fun with it i'm also going to add some bunched thread to mine if you'd like a tutorial on step by step on how to do that i'll put a link to that video below but it's one of my favorite ways to add interest and texture to a project there's definitely no right or wrong way to do this it's just really about having fun just relaxing and not worrying too much about making a mess And there you have free flow stitching. I love the texture it creates. 
I'm now going to embellish this further before I attach it to the cover of the journal. It's now going to be a process of just building up all the different layers to create a very interesting piece. So I've got all my different elements and I'm just going to place them on top of each other, underneath, picking out from underneath. Whatever you feel you want to do, use as much or as little as you want. This is a bit of a process. Sometimes it can go really, really quickly. Sometimes it takes a bit longer. So I'll just let the video run and just show you how I build up all the different layers. During this process, you'll see me stop and pause. That's normally when I'm thinking whether I like it or not, or if I need to move something. So it is sort of not pre-planned. I just build it as I go. Once I'm happy with all the placements of all the different bits and pieces, I'm going to start gluing everything down. I'm going to use a combination of a clear craft glue and some hot glue. I'm again curling up the edges and roughing up some of the edges because I don't want any of the bits sort of just flat down. I want it to be peeling off the page.
I feel it needs a bit more of a pop of color. So I'm going to use this orangey vintage paper. I just punch a circle with my little round punch just to pop that underneath the clock, just to give a little bit of that extra color. And then just to balance that out, I'm also going to do a die cut leaf using the die, using that same orange paper and put it on the top left just to balance the orange color out. One more thing I'm going to add before I put it onto the cover, I'm going to add some white splatter. I'm just covering up the little poem and my clock so that doesn't have any splatter getting onto it. And then I'm just going to use some watered down white acrylic paint and I'm going to splatter over the rest of the piece. This just lightens everything up and I think makes it a little bit more cohesive and I love the additional texture it creates when you add splatter. Once everything is dry, I'm going to attach this now to the cover. I'm going to use double-sided tape and hot glue. I'm using both adhesives just so I can be sure it's extra secure on the top of the journal. I really hope you enjoyed this video of me showing you how to make an autumn cover with free flow stitching. I hope you were inspired to try this out yourself and to create your own exciting projects. You can see the stitching that is peeping through underneath, which I think creates really great interest. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Bye.